Uh, by the way, that intramolecular Claisen condensation is called the Dieckmann condensation. Have you heard yeah. that term? Okay, I don't know if that name's important, but Dieckmann oh, condensation. I, I thought it was just another name for Claisen, but it's the intramolecular Close. one. Intramolecular, yeah. yeah. Dieckmann condensation is intramolecular Claisen condensation, but we shouldn't let the, the, the names confuse us. They're all just variations on the same thing. Dieckmann condensation is the intramolecular Claisen condensation. Uh, I don't, to save time, I won't go through this whole thing here, but uh, what would happen first here? What's the supply of H minuses? So it would steal an H. Um, an alpha carbon of the ketone problem? That is right. One good thing to do is maybe start by labeling the alpha carbons. Now, it doesn't matter whether it steals it from the left-hand alpha carbon or the right-hand alpha carbon because they're equivalent, but we do have to decide, is it going to take it from the ketone alpha carbon or from the ester alpha carbon? Ketone. And you were right. You said ketone. That's right. Do um, you know why that is? Because it's more acidic. Yeah, ketones are more acidic. Do you know why that is? That one's more stable because of resonance. So are you saying this is more or less stable? More stable. If it was more stable, then this would be the more acidic. This is from the ester, right? Now, you guys were right when you said that this was more acidic. You were right that this is the one that wants to deprotonate. This is tricky. The book says that uh, the ketone is more acidic. I can't find where it says why that is. But I think the reason is, um, what is the effect of this oxygen here? Um, we need to decide, uh, what's the effect of this oxygen? Is this oxygen going to help us to spread out the negative charge or to concentrate it? Now, this is tricky. Normally, you would think this oxygen is spreading this out by induction. However, remember now we have to start taking into account resonance structures. Um, through resonance, the oxygen is actually pushing electrons in this direction towards the negative charge. Remember that the, the reason that this negative charge could be stabilized is there's a resonance structure where the negative charge can move on to this oxygen. But that's not going to be as important if this oxygen is pushing its own negative charge onto this oxygen over here. So it's good to be able to explain things with resonance. So these should be resonance. why this alpha carbon was acidic in the first place is that there's this resonance structure where it can put its negative charge on this oxygen. But this now is going to be um, not as important because there's another resonance structure where this, this oxygen over here on the right pushes a negative charge onto this oxygen. Um, so it's not as easy. This resonance structure is not going to be as important because it has to compete with this resonance structure as well. I wouldn't think that this would be a very important resonance structure because it has so many charges. But anyway, it is somewhat decreasing the importance of this resonance structure. And that was not an issue here with the ketone. The ketone didn't have any competing resonance structures. So I think the explanation here is um, the thing that's stabilizing this enolate is this resonance structure. But in the ester case, that has to compete with another resonance structure. And that's not the case here with the ketone. Um, therefore, this, um, therefore, this is the deprotonated ester is less stable than the deprotonated ketone. So your first guess was correct. And the ketone is going to be likely to deprotonate. The tricky thing here is. In the past, we would have thought of it as an oxygen as an electron withdrawing by induction. 
But remember what we have to really start focusing on now is resonance. And resonance can cancel out induction. By resonance, this oxygen is pushing electrons towards the negative charge. And oftentimes resonance can outweigh inductive effects. Resonance tends to be a stronger effect. OK. Um, well, you wouldn't have to figure that out from scratch every time. So perhaps we should also memorize that ketones are more acidic than esters. Perhaps you've already done that. But I wouldn't be surprised if you had to give an explanation like this on the test. So your first guess was correct. We're going to deprotonate this ketone. And then what would happen? The will attack the carbonyl. Right. All right. And to save time, I guess we won't go through that whole reaction. It'll be just like similar to the other reactions we've gone through. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in these labels. I'm going to label this alpha carbon, because this is the one that will be deprotonated. I'm going to asterisk this carbonyl group, because this is the carbonyl group that's acting like the electrophile. I'm not going to label this alpha carbon anymore, because it's not being deprotonated. And I'm not going to label these, uh, this carbonyl, because it's not being electrophilic. And then this is just really another example of a place in condensation. So previously, we saw a place in condensation where one ester attacked another ester. But you could also have a ketone attack an ester, because a ketone can also be made into an enolate and then it can attack the ester. OK, also, we haven't used this base before today, for um, uh, earlier today. I think we saw it in an earlier session. But sodium hydride, remember that this is not a source of nucleophilic hydrogens, but it is a source of basic hydrogens. So we don't need to worry about sodium hydride acting like a nucleophile, um, but it will act like a base. So it, um, this is something else we can use to make an enolate. So this is something else that we can use to make an enolate. And the final product? Yeah. Did you already try it? All right. You're going to have that, because that's going to eventually leave as a leaving group. With the H. Right, are you trying to draw the final product? Yeah. Yeah. OK, all right, well, why don't we do the, the final product since we're at it? Uh, because there, there is a, a mistake with your carbon connectivity there. I think that what would help you is actually putting in the alphas and the asterisks. That would help to get that right, and trying to follow this pattern up here. And then we can fix the connectivity. Uh, maybe to save time, we won't go through the whole mechanism, and we'll just try to draw the product. Yeah, I think you saw it. Although, uh, yeah. I don't know, maybe you were right the first time. Maybe I was the one that was confused. Yeah, you were probably right the first time. <laughs> you were right the first time, even without the asterisks. Yeah, you got it. You're right, and I was confused. Um, so. But then the positive at the end saying. is negative. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The negative, right. what's the thing that's, oh, it's the leaving group. So here's the ester that got attacked. It's going to lose its L group, and it's going to be replaced by this alpha carbon. The alpha carbon is connected to a carbonyl and a CH3 group, and we know that uh, it's going to end up deprotonated. Is the L group that's left. So uh, you, you were absolutely right all along. This well, the L group that left is going to be protonated. All right, again. And this is going to be protonated. OK? OK, good. Uh, you got it. So this is more confusing uh, for me than it is for you. Mm -hmm. uh, there was something else I wanted to mention, though. We usually don't really want depro or deprotonated 1,3-dicarbonyls. We probably want a protonated 1,3-dicarbonyl. So usually what we would do here Right. H3O plus is how it's often written, or H plus, yeah. Sarah, I think in the book they wrote H plus, H2O, and E. I don't think we need that for this stuff. Oh, uh, maybe it was not But yeah, in the book they've got written like this. I don't think we would need heat, because it's very easy to protonate this now in an acidic solution. So if you don't want your 1,3-dicarbonyl to end up deprotonated, you should have a second separate step where you add acid. Um, that's very common in the book as well. So actually, our final products here if we have this separate step, then we would get this. Of course, you can't add the acid until the place and condensation is over. Notice that this is a source of H minus, and this is a source of H plus. These are very different H's. By the way, this is a source of basic hydrogen. What would be a good source of nucleophilic hydrogen? Right, that's it. Or 
sodium borohydride. But sodium borohydride is much less reactive, so we're using that less nowadays. We're mainly using lithium aluminum hydride as a source. So this is a source of nucleophilic hydrogen, and this is a source of basic hydrogen. That basically has to be memorized.